This is the B with Ari Melber, and I am joined for a very special interview by the legendary Ari. Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. Yeah. Rizzo yeah. Capadonna, you got Inspector Deck, Master yeah. Killer, yeah. Go Chase Killer. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thank you Thanks for having us. You have a tour, you have the new project of Mike's and Men on Showtime, and I just want to get into the music. Uh, Rizza, what does this project mean? Uh, and what does it mean to you when you see a new generation coming up excited about Wu Tang? Well, you see a new generation that's all about music and our culture <clears throat> and infusing it to theirs. It's a, it's a blessing. It means all the hard work we put in, all the hours, all the travels we, we use, you know, for being away from our families and dedicating to our art. It's like we planted those seeds and now they're sprouting, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's the greatest reward. Uh, this documentary was so cool about it, I think. You'll, you'll hear things about us that we didn't even know about each other because I think it takes a man a certain age, right, or a certain evolution to be able to express himself, you know what I mean? Mm. And we are at that evolutionary stage in our lives. We're not cavemen anymore, all right? <laughs> we was cavemen, though. <laughs> Woo! We was bad. You know what I mean? You're going to see that in Showtime. We yeah. used to. Woo wee! But we're not cavemen anymore. And, <laughs> and the thing about evolution is that if, if any man sees another man fly, we all will fly, right? Mm. So when, the, when these kids or uh, anybody watches Wu-Tang Doc and they see our struggle and see what we've been through, I'm sure it will inspire them. It will inspire the hip-hop generation that's present and it will inspire a hip-hop generation that's coming up, you know what I mean? Because they'll get a chance to see a path of good people. Wu-Tang as music, as art, is super raw, but super intellectual. How did you do both things? And did, did you know from the start it was going to be that way? I think we always knew that. He always was intellectual. <laughs> talent, you know, the thing about our talent is that, you know, we have substance. You know what I'm saying? So that's the balance, you know what I mean? With everything. It's, that's one of his it's, finer it's, qualities, this guy right here. <laughs> I was in love with his mind. His mind was yeah, like... Yeah, his the mind. It's, I, we was in the hood, we was in ghetto, you know, we was in the streets. Mm -hmm. His mind was intellectual, and I never liked ignorance growing up. I don't know what was wrong with me. I was always attracted to, you know, to brothers who had smarts, who was, who was very intellectual. And these brothers all around Beautiful me had, had all, all, that's one common thing we all have, intellectuals. You know what I'm saying? And, so you um, said when you were growing up with Rizzo, you said on the street. So what was it, in, even at that time, that made it so clear he was intellectual? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't explain it. in mathematics, Rizzo, yeah. it's the knowledge of, Self. Yeah, man. He was you know, just, you know, it was just like that. And, uh, and uh, articulated. That's, that's, that's the camaraderie with all of us. Right. So it was everything, the, man. The, 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 the mind and, and, and I guess the knowledge itself and, um, you know, just being smart. Yeah. When, you, when you add it to our music, right? So our music is reflecting our emotions. You know, that's why you hear Wu Tang Clan be attacking your emotions or Inspector Dex to hit you from every angle and form a circle. So we're taking, taking everything we're seeing. In our, in our lives, in our, in our neighborhood, in our own personal lives. And we are forming that into a musical expression. I think that if we didn't have a chance, right, and it goes for many people, whether, you know, any race of people, any country, if you don't have an outlet for anger, frustration, uh, emotions, sadness, all these different things, if you don't have an outlet for it, it stays in and blows up inside you. Especially men. And blows up inside your community. Especially males. Mm -hmm. Males. Males got it bad. Well, and you got, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but I've read you talk about therapy and getting in touch with your emotions, that that was important. It, it, was, it was a situation where I was spilling a lot of things. Like, I didn't know that if your mind has a lot of stress and you don't let it out, your body will sit down without you. In other words, you, you was, your cheese would slip off your cracker. You know what I mean? You, would, you won't know what's going on. And you don't like, want yo, cheese like, off the cracker. You, you want to keep the cheese up? on the cracker. You, right. you, you want to stand, stand up. You want to stand up. You want to stand up. But your body will sit down without you. Right. And I had to learn that. And then I went to the hospital like, oh, what happened? I had a situation that happened. And I didn't know what was going on. So when I started talking about this situation, I was like, wow, because I, I feel like I'm strong. I feel like all men feel like we men. We got to contain our emotions. We got to contain certain things. And we can't talk about certain things. We can't show no emotion. Mm -hmm. That shit get bottled up, especially if you, you're under a lot of stress. And it can come out many ways. It can come out violently. It can come out physical ills. You can get, you know, and it, it, it comes out. And one of the coolest things, Keep Master sure. Master Killer got a song that's called Therapy, right? Yes, sir. And he took the word, the rap because in the word therapy the word rap is in the middle and 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 he said this music this rap that's what's therapeutic to him 
You know what I mean? And, and I think we all could agree that, that this, this music and this art has been our therapy. And, we, and so we, 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 you know, Ghostface wasn't shy to say, you know, you know uh, settling for Lester, the God, Lester's on my dresser, you know what I mean? And, and how he felt and can it be? You know, Raekwon wasn't shy to say that his mother and father separated. And they had to move to Staten Island and, and face it and face life, you know what I mean? How important is that explicitly for black men in America, where America tells its own stories about black men? Oh, and some man. of those stories are black men are scary to America. Right. And you're writing songs that tell your own story. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's one of the most important things I think this documentary will do. You're going to hear nine voices from nine black men. You're going to go into our houses, our families. You're going to meet our fathers. You're going to see some of our fathers who left us. And you're going to still see that no matter what, we as men, right, as men, have all the capacities, all the capacities on the emotional, intellectual, entrepreneurial, creative, the wisdom, the strength and the beauty, all these capacities exist in us and we found the way to utilize it. Where some people may turn away from it, may give up on it, you know, not to talk too much, but I, I watched the Dr. King documentary and, uh, and, and, and it was a kid, 12 year old kid that asked him, why are you rioting and looting? You know, what about your future? He said, I ain't got no future. And a lot of us as black men feel we don't have a future. We don't see our own future. We don't see the future of that brother right there. You know, you look at a brother like Nipsey Hussle who, who was doing something beautiful. But the brother don't see his future, nor his own future. And since that act has happened, for, for, for that act of violence has now triggered so many families are hurt. Nipsey's family's hurt. This guy's family's hurt. I heard now his little nephews is getting shot. It's like so many people are dying because people don't take the time to realize if we tell our own stories and show that, yo, hold on, son. That's not the, that's not the way it's going to be forever. You know what I mean? That's today. What about tomorrow? Right? And I just want to make one more comment with Deck was saying earlier about, you think about the young rappers out there, right? And they separate themselves from the older generation, which they shouldn't do. We shouldn't separate from them. But the truth of life, if you ain't getting older, you're dead. So if you're 99, trust me, you want to be 100. It's, right. it's only one option right. to either get older or to die. And when you dying in vain, like a lot of black men mm -hmm. has, has been in our country, then our people remain in the same situation for hundreds and hundreds of years. And I think that if any time, you know, any generation could get out of that, this is the generation that could get out of it. Why? Information is a valuable. Opportunity is a valuable. Like you said, these rappers, we already made hip hop a multi-billion dollar business, yo. So you don't gotta create that now. You know what I mean? It's already, you know, when we was trying to make music, I had to get an SP 1200, $2,000 for only 10 seconds of sample time. My phone could sample for 24 hours, man. <laughs> and it's in my pocket, yo. I got an orchestra in my pocket, okay? So the power of what we could do now is greater than ever. You know what I mean? And, and, and of mics and men, you know, it gives you a glimpse of that past. And you're looking at us right now, you're seeing the product of that past. And here's the future. We, we also have a TV show that's being scripted about us. You know what I mean? And that's, that's not because we didn't work hard or because we didn't go through struggle. We went through struggle, yo. And here we are now able to sit amongst each other in a beautiful sunny day in New York City, <laughs> right. I mean, on the top of the rock. Top of the rock. Top of the rock. You're shaking your head, yeah. <laughs> I'm just agreeing with my brother, words of wisdom, you know? Oh, right. Beautiful. Uh, chess. Yes, sir. Why chess? Chess teaches patience. Chess is life. Teaches you great values of what's really valuable. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's an, it might be an opportunity for you to make a move or do something but is it wise? You know what I mean? So there's so many values about chess, so many different aspects, so many different angles, you know? But I love it, it's life to me. Me, it's like watching paint dry. You don't I, play. I, 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 don't I, I, watch it. I never got into it, it's just too many moves for me, you know? Well, you got, let me read something well, you that you wrote in your new book, because you, you all have book. been creative in so many different ways. You say, I've been in the game long enough to know people come and go. I've seen the rap world go from Master P to Tupac to Biggie to 50 Cent to the new wave of Lil Wayne and on. I'm still happy for how long I've been in the game as an artist. I'll always be thankful that hip hop 
save my life. I, I want to flip it. Anyone watching this could see the success and the leadership each of you events and why hip hop's been good for your life. Why is hip hop good for so many other people's lives? Why do so many people look up to you and your music that it connected with them at, at certain points in their lives? It's reality, the truth. You know, you gotta you give them the truth, they can't deny it. You know, you, 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 can, sugar, you can sugarcoat a lot of stuff, but the truth is pure, it's, it's untampered with. Mm. There's various, various levels of information that people could relate to. Child and tribulations and stuff that we go through every day. We speak about that. Sometimes we we put it in a real vivid, you know, picture so you can really get a grasp on it. And that's you know we 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 mess with your emotions and your feelings, and people like that. Uh, Inspector, Stimulation. Inspector Deck was saying earlier, there can be this generational strife, uh, but you're also working with with up and coming rappers. You did this song with Logic, right. and he wow. gives you the shout out and he says. <laughs> Go ahead. That's my little man. That's my little man. Yeah. <laughs> Logic is a, is a crazy case because before Logic was Logic, Logic used to open up with me back on tour, you know, years back. And he used to always say, like, yo, y'all y'all inspired me. I'm going to do big things. And he always was, you know, it was kind of like he kind of foreseen this whole moment for himself. So me seeing him was like, oh, yo, that's the dude that used to it was a, shorty, open shorty. up a den, den for me. You know what I'm you saying? Think, and did you think he would go this far? He's got a real follow-up. I did, because when he, when he opened up that day, he just had a presence on the mic that, you know, a lot of people grab the mic and try to get in front of the crowd, then they see what it really is, and then they, it overwhelms them. Like, the moment uh -huh. they take it from away, take it from themselves, and they get nervous. But he took it like a champ, you know? Like, he saw it like he saw himself doing it. So mm. doing that track with Logic later on in life is like, yo, it's... It's kind of crazy. Like I was there for the beginning of your career. Now you're blowing up, at kind of like on, on, on my way out. You know what I mean? And so for him to team up, I think that was not on your way out. Not on your way out, brother. You know, on your way up. You know, way up. Way up. But you know, we always want to levitate. Um, you know, I heard if you're aging, you're you're still alive. Yeah, you're still right. alive. You know what I mean? But you know how it is. Like as long as I can do this. Yeah, we good. But now, <laughs> yeah, my, my my 30 year old punches hurt more than than my, than my 40 year old punches. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Ghostface, martial arts, where does that fit into all this? Was that something you guys were just casually interested in growing up and then it became a kind of a metaphor or, or how did that all come about? Yeah, man, I mean, we was all checking out the flicks back then. When you, you know, Channel 5 and all that. And, um, you know, Riz kind of like just took it to the next wave with it. You know, his vision was, you know, he mixed it together. And um, it served it to the people. Is you know, but uh, we used to cut school 42nd Street. But, but that's where you'd watch the films. A lot of films. a lot of films on 42nd yeah, Street. So you'd come in from I, I Staten. Never, uh, yeah, but yeah, but but the part the part when we was forming Wu Tang, we would cut you know cut like my house is the hooky house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Every time yeah, we watch, yeah, yeah. Oh, what? We watch the same Had films. Had the shorties so. up in there. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, like, it was the hooky. Same. Movie. Yeah, it was the hooky house. Yeah, I mean, the sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> All karate flicks. Yeah. Hooks. <laughs> yo. Yo, but it was it was fun though. It was fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then we start when we start doing this music, he just combined it. Combined it. And then you know when you get to hear the 36 chambers, you see the skits. It's like, yo, but every one of us got our own style. So we was like one of the people that's in the flicks. You know what I mean? And um I don't know. I guess the world was on the same page some of it. You know what I mean? But uh I know we did a lot for, uh, cause somebody was thinking me the other day, saying like when we did that, we brought it back like to China. Right. And it was like, yo, they just fell in love. Like, right, right. They cause we didn't forget to... about them. Right, right, you know right. What I mean? <laughs> so it was like, so yo, the... and it was, now we catch it from both sides of the globe. Right, the integrating of culture. That's right, that's right. You know, America is that anyway, at the end of the day. Hip hop is right, that, baby. you know? You think about hip hop, man, and you go to the Bronx and you see the Latino brothers and the black brothers, and, in, and, in, and even the poor white brothers writing their names on walls, doing graffiti. You know what I mean? You see the you see uh, the Korean brothers. You go to go to their country, you'll see a, a remnants of it. You go to France, mm -hmm. where MC Solar and them is, is happening there. So, but America, all these different cultures was was always melting. You listen to our music, you also hear a comic book, right? Why? There was comic book stores. It was record stores. You know what I mean? And, and, and we and I had comics, he had comics, mm -hmm. Meth had boxes of comics, uh, ODB and, and his brother, Mad Comics. So, so you start hearing us do our lyrics, next thing you know, Ghostface, I'm Tony Starks, I'm Iron Man, you know what I mean? 
Method Man, I'm Johnny Blaze, you know, because these things that we are absorbing in our youth, in the mix of watching what, uh, what, what the Paris crew is doing <laughs> and, and, and what the AV, what the AV is doing, yeah, yep. in the mix of all the knockouts and the shooting and the guns and all that, we still have... Wanted to be the Flash. Yeah, exactly. Still had the like brotherhood. That, you know what I'm saying? And, and then we're the young. You know, we, like, right. I, I think J. Cole's got a song that I really, I really like. Uh, where he says he's the, uh, the, the bridge or the third, the third child, something like that. Right? The middle child? The middle child, the middle child. Mm. Uh, and he is the middle child for our generation to this generation, but we're the middle child from Grandmaster Flash generation to that, you know what I mean? Mm. I think the Jizza, you know, he's not here talking today. He's in Europe on, doing a, t- a tour. But the Jizza is actually probably the f- one of the first babies of the, of the new school, of that old school. You know what I mean? And he, and he helped become, he molded us. He taught me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And taught many of us, and that's, and that's spread. And we probably, we are probably, Wu-Tang is probably the bridge of that generation to bring it up to the 2000, 2005. And then it comes in. You know, with 50 and all of them. But then J. Cole's, when he pointed that out of himself, I was like, yeah, he's right, because there's always going to be that. Every 20 years, there's going to be somebody that gets it both. You know what I mean? Yeah. Michael Jackson was probably that, you know, having the soul and then bringing the pop up into what Motown and this whole thing to a whole nother chamber. You know what I mean? Well, and who, so when you go we, ahead. We like the W, it's, it's just the fusion of all the human families, though, I think. Y'all agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you were first putting the karate sound into it, did you think this is weird? People might not <laughs> like it. Like, because when you look at that in in Thirty Six Chambers or the way Liquid Swords begins with Jizza, it's legendary. It means yeah, something to people. But dope. at the time, yeah. was it weird? Was it a well, risk? Was, at, the, at that time, us, to us, it was true. Yeah, yeah, at that time, karate was like everywhere. Like I don't know, I can't explain it. It was on Saturday. It was Saturday, 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 Saturday night, matinee. Saturday, Saturday matinee. matinee it was Bruce Lee. It was you no. Know, it was. It was, it was around us. Yo, make it so Perfect make it, sound Before effects. the music, we used to be like trying to moves out on each other. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do the sounds with our mouth. Yeah. And you coach, would, you and would play the karate. Yeah. In the trench yeah. In the yeah. Yeah. In the hallway. And, and from yeah. us, when we Shit. decided to be, you know, Wu Tang Clan, the, the it, you know, the sound effects, it, it turns, yeah. like, on a, as a producer, the, the, as a producer, one idea was to make the albums be a movie. So remember, we're making this say, music. Say that again. That means what? To make the album be a movie. Yeah, yeah. This is before DVDs. Oh, but is that a concept? How can an album be a movie? What does that mean? That's what I was trying to do. I wanted you to put in our albums, be in your car, and, and see a movie. You know what I mean? That was our goal. That was our creative goal. And we kept that up for, for the, listen to those albums. That's why Cuban Link started off. It's a hike's going on. I could, I, could, I, could, I could break down Cuban Link so well. He's like, one for you, two for me. To, right, so he's in the beginning of Cuban Links on Knuckleheads, right? He's part of the first thing, but he don't, he, he leaves it because cause, cause he, he leaves this thing after that because homie ain't splitting the money right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then after he goes, after Raekwon and Ghost go through what they going through, they're getting some money, but now they need one big flip. And that's when the Wu Gambino song come in. I got to call in these guys for this big flip. Mm. Like, like if you go through the album, I, you know, when we went through it, we was talking about it, putting the songs in, and then, you know, me, I'm a needle and thread guy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, I'm, I'm editing it like a movie. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm thinking that it's going to mm-hmm. be a movie. But it wasn't no DVDs. Like, you can have no, it wasn't no, nobody didn't have no TVs in their headsets yet. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but that was part of the foundation. So for us, the kung fu sounds and the vibe and the voices was all part of telling our story, setting our atmosphere. You know what I mean? And... And, and I just want to say we, we have a lot of respect, you know, for the, for the Asian culture, so supreme respect. I mean, you know, the child you are make the man you are, make you become the man you are. Papa will always say that to us, right? And the beauty of it all is after all these albums and all this music and all this mental imagination of it, you go, you know, we have films like The Man with the Iron Fist where you hear Wu-Tang music in it, but yet you see the actors that we sampled playing in the movies with us, you know what I mean? And that's the blessing of it, you know what I mean? You see Ghostface, he's in Iron Man, like the the movie, like he's in that movie. You see Method Man, he's got to smoke a blunt with Luke Cage. It's it's like, it's it's like, wow, the comic, it's happening, Mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We talk to a lot of people 
who don't understand that a lot of rappers have characters. They play characters. So RZA, the character, might be somewhat different, you tell me, than I got like the 16 names, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, thing, all thing I want to say is I'm not a schizophrenic. <laughs> so, so why is that different than other music, do you think, that a Ghostface Killer, are you the same person the rest of the day that you might be in your music? No. <laughs> it's like, you know, like right now I'm cooling. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in chill out mode right now. But it's like, you know, maybe when you when you start writing, you get behind, you know, you might got to put that mask on for that. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm in chill mode. You know what I mean? So I guess whatever you feel, when I came with the Tony Starks, it was a shirt that made me feel like Tony Starks. You know what I mean? How the collar went up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, yo, I told Ray one day, yo, this is, Tony, this is my Tony Stark shirt. You know what I mean? And it just stayed. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, that, and you know, I still got ghosts, whatever, you know. I got a $2,000 shirt, though. Yeah, it was because like. Because I, I think sometimes <laughs> your, your fans understand that more than other pe people who hear it secondhand. Or parents come in and they see, bring the, bring the effing ruckus. Right. right. And right. they're like, this is scary. Right, right, right. But right. It's, that's not all. That's not, or you tell me, that's not all of you. Yeah, of yeah. You could bring the ruckus on a, on a boogie board. You know what I'm saying? You, you could bring the ruckus on roller skates. You, bring the, you could bring the ruckus while you humping. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right, right. Bring the bring ruckus making love. Yeah. So you just listed several nonviolent ways yeah. to bring the ruckus. Yeah. Right, come on, man. Ruckus is just You don't walk around with the school face all day. You know what I'm saying? It's like that, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Blowing the jazz horn, ways of life. jazz horn through the music, yeah. Yeah. manifest. Mm. Yeah. Different ways of life through the music. That's how we manifest That's it, man. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think, the, I think the, too. you know, the rap identity goes along with any type of hero culture, you know? Clark Kent, you know, he wears a suit and glasses. You know what I mean? But he could bend still. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. You know, so so I think oh, that's uh, hip hop. We are like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a good one. You know, you, you know, it's when it's time to put that costume on. You know, yeah. we're ready. When we say yeah, when that boom, that, that double, you go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah we ready. Yeah, that's the bat sign, baby. Before like, I go to the last topic, anything you want to say that we didn't get to? Anyone? Mm. Nah, I'm good, man. Just, I ask that good. in every interview. Yeah. You never know. Someone <laughs> say, oh, one more thing, I want to. I'm gonna confess a crime or whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they do. How about the next one? Oh man. man. Twenty-five years. They might be eliminated rap. right now. They might have one more game. Okay. They, they won the first game who, and then who, who the Brooklyn Nets. Oh. Yeah. But they was in the playoffs. The Knicks didn't even make yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Man. Knicks you got that curse. Man. Man. Just look out for what we got in store. I got to ride with Brooklyn. Yeah. Because this is like the beginning of a new wave. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was, thought, I was thinking So uh, what... the documentaries, the Hulu joint, you know what I mean? Albums and, you know, a yeah. bunch of movies he's doing. You know, meth, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more that's going to be coming. This ain't nah, it's not the over end yet. of it. It's going to be coming 25 now. years from yeah. there. You know what I mean? It's wild. What we're doing now, check out next year because all that, that's when it's really going to open up. You know what I mean? So, you know. That's it, Let's man. We take forever, peeled. man. We take, take forever. forever. Uh, by ever. ABC. The last thing I'm going to ask you about is something I know Riz and I were going to talk about, and I know from interviews, not everyone wants to talk politics, which is totally fine. Uh, but politics and culture have been merged right now. A lot of people with a lot of ideas. Uh, Riz, let's take a look at something you said on Election Day, 2016. I'm not going to, you know, hire uh, a painter to cook my dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hire a chef. Yeah. And even though, you know, so to me, Hillary is that chef for our country. Rizzo, we've now had about two years of the Donald Trump presidency. Uh, were you right? What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, you know, I said this way, you know, I had a lot of passion in me that day, right? So I did another interview uh, maybe, I don't know, a month earlier, a little, a little earlier with uh, John Hellerman on uh, NBC. He had the... Uh, John Hellerman's a huge Wu-Tang fan. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Well, I did an interview with him, and he asked me about the, uh, you know, the same question about the politics of it. And I answered him like this, and this is how I felt to this day. I said, if America is a country that's about freedom, justice, equality for the people, is there a country that wants us to grow 
uh, to be the best that we can, sovereignty of every individual, every every man to have the thing we pledge. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If this is that kind of country, right, yeah, then Hillary Clinton would have been a perfect president for us at that time during that election. But if America is a corporation, and America is just a big company, yeah, then Donald Trump is a good guy to run it. Exactly, because he's a businessman. Exactly. So, we <laughs> let might... Me, let we me might, ask you a follow-up. We might Since be a, I'm in the no, news, I'll push you on that. Do we want our society to be run like a for-profit corporation or more like something that includes everybody? I think for the, for the, I think for the long term, it's better to run it for something that includes everybody. Because, the, so let's go back to when the food is genetically modified, okay? There's no chance of randomism. There's no chance for, there's no chance for that, for that wild flower to grow something new that becomes even more prosperous, right? It's now cookie cut, right? It's now every day, it's, 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 it's so controlled, right? It's so controlled that um, the option of randomism doesn't happen. And if you don't have a random, right? The Y chromosome in itself is a random, brother. Mm. Just think about that for a minute. <laughs> Go to science on that. They know what the Y chromosome is. We got to get yeah, Jizza just, and Neil deGrasse yeah, Tyson back. Just in think here. about that. Yeah, but <laughs> so point being made. Go Google it. Right? Yeah, point being made is that is that we, you know, you know, if look, if we a country for the people. That I took a pledge when I was a kid, man. You took it. You took it. You took it. Our president had to take it. It's, it, it was all part of our schooling. And it said that this is one nation under God, indivisible. So that word indivisible means we can't be divided. I can't call you white American, you can't call me black American, you can call them Asian American, Latin American. No, it's American, baby. It's indivisible, so how can you divide it? But if you're dealing with a company and a corporation, yeah, we got departments. <laughs> we got everything that divide everybody and send it around. And if that's the hustle, that's the hustle. Now for us, we're entrepreneurs. We started selling socks, t-shirts, weed, whatever. So we, we, we understand capitalism and we're gonna always be able to hustle. But if this is a country, you know what I mean, that stands on the so-called founding principles where every man is, is, it has, a, has a natural right to these freedoms, to these justice, to this pursuit of happiness, it's a natural right. You know, it's a different party when it, when it, uh, how they how they rocking now. So, we as a country got to make that choice. One thing I'm gonna end this on because I could, you know, whatever. The, the most craziest thing about it all is that, and this is a fact, bro. I don't care who was the president. My community has not changed much, bro. That's right. Chicago has not changed much in, in our communities. No matter who's the president, bro. It's still violence, it's still drugs, it's still poverty. And it's still the same promise that it's gonna be something different and it has not changed. Exactly. So that's, so for us, we gotta do what we gotta do right. on our own. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anybody wanna to add to that? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, Come uh, it's hard to follow Riza. Right. My final question was, will be like a lightning round. Your favorite Wu-Tang song, or your favorite other Wu-Tang member, although I, I imagine most of you won't answer that. <laughs> um, but but to, to whip it around, other favorites, you got? What, for a song? Favorite, favorite Wu song for you. I like Lay the Hammer. Dun, 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 oh, dun, 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 bam, bam, bam. Ah, you know that one? Ah. That's one of my favorites. That's yeah. nice. That's Deck? I mean, damn, one of my favorite songs, um, I just listened to just an Animal Planet the other day. I wow. forgot how dope yeah. that was. Powerful. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot too. It's too fucking it's, like, it's, it's a lot. It's just too much. Too just, much. Just hearing that though I mean, yesterday was like. You no, know, Winter Wars was a classic, but um shit. <laughs> I like fucking Wu Gambinos. You know what I'm saying? I think we should perform that more on the stage at these shows. We'll never do that shit. Okay. That shit is crazy. I, I say Mr. Be a chess boxing because that was my first rhyme that I ever wrote. So that's that what was got. your first rhyme ever. Exactly. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be sitting here. 
a game of chess is like a sword fight. Exactly. You gotta think, you gotta think first, before you move. You move. Yep. Right. <laughs> I don't have. I, I can't. I don't, I don't have him. one. I don't got yeah. one either. Yeah. Resident Ghostface won't pick. No, nah, because it's too. It's too, <laughs> it's too many. many. It's. I can't tell you what's my uh, best. It's like it's. Yeah. Like he just came out with Lady Hammer and, and 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 you know what I mean. I know he made me think of Diesel. Remember Diesel? Right. Was yeah. Diesel? Yeah. We did that in Europe. Yeah, remember Diesel? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's too one. Too mighty look, I give. Much. I give you a song right now, just that I just think is 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 is, is a great Wu song. You know, we performed Triumph on Fallon, of course. That's, that's always a great song because sure. you, get, you get the lyrical content of everybody. But on that same album, there's a song called Impossible that to me had a strong elevation of lyrical content in it as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go there. Uh, as I mentioned, it's an honor to have you here. It's a personal dream. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the beat. Wu-Tang is for the children. Yes, Thank sir. you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.